Today on Sugar Spun Run, I'll be showing you how to make my favorite white cake completely from scratch. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers! So this recipe video is actually long overdue. This white cake recipe has been on my blog for at least a year now. It has over 100 five-star ratings and I thought it was about time I make a video to show you exactly how to make it. Now to get started, you're going to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and you're going to want to grab a large mixing bowl. I'm going to be using an electric hand mixer for this recipe today, but if you have a stand mixer, that will work perfectly as well. I usually use my stand mixer actually for this recipe. Now, the first thing we're going to add to our mixing bowl is six tablespoons of unsalted butter, and you want this to be softened. We're going to use our electric mixer to just beat this butter until it's nice and creamy. With this mixer, that only takes a second. Now, the next thing you're going to need is two thirds cup of a neutral oil. So I like to use canola oil, vegetable oil, oil would also be fine. Next, we'll be adding our sugar. We are only using granulated sugar for this recipe to keep that cake nice and white, so no brown sugar. You're going to need two cups. Now use your mixer again to beat everything together until it's completely combined. Just want to pause real quickly to show you. So you can see right now you still have some visible lumps of butter. You want to keep mixing until you can't really distinguish the butter from the other ingredients. Everything should be really well combined. So of course we need to flavor this cake and we'll be using vanilla extract to do that. You'll need one tablespoon of vanilla extract. I really recommend, if you can, getting your hands on a clear vanilla extract. Clear vanilla is always imitation vanilla. Um, that's okay for this recipe because it gives you a good flavor and it gives you a very white cake. If you use regular vanilla, your cake will still be pretty white, but the vanilla can tend to tint it a little bit brown. And we'll stir this in briefly. Just gonna use my spatula really fast just to manually stir everything together, make sure everything that's on the sides and bottom of the bowl is nicely incorporated. So we will set this aside and we are going to need to grab a separate bowl for our flour. This recipe uses all purpose flour and you are going to need two and two thirds cup plus two tablespoons of all purpose flour. We'll add one tablespoon of baking powder and one teaspoon of salt. And just stir everything together until completely combined. You can use a spoon or you can use a whisk. A whisk would actually be preferable because it breaks up any lumps that might be in the flour. All right, so let's bring back our butter mixture and you are going to need to measure out one cup of milk and I'm using whole milk. Now, ideally you should set this out a little bit in advance and it should be at room temperature and all of your ingredients should really be at room temperature for best results. So what we're going to do now that we have our milk and our flour mixture is we are going to alternate adding our flour mixture and our milk. I'm going to start and end with a flour mixture, so I'll add about one fourth of this in with my butter mixture. So we'll use our electric mixer again to stir the flour in. We're just gonna use low to medium speed until the flour mixture is just combined. And then we'll add about one third of our milk mixture, or just our milk, there's no mixture there, it's, it's just milk. and just keep alternating until you've added all of your flour and all of your milk. Now use your spatula just to scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl because you wanna make sure that all of that flour and milk are completely combined into the batter. Okay, so now we need our eggs. You will need six large eggs for this recipe and ideally they should be at room temperature. Now we are only going to be using the egg whites, so we will divide all of these eggs. Now whenever you are working with egg whites, it's very important that you do not get any yolk in here. You wanna make sure you keep the yolk completely separate. If you get even a little bit of yolk in with your whites, you're going to need to toss that. Otherwise your eggs won't whip to stiff peaks, which I'll show you in a minute. So I always crack my eggs in one bowl and then I'll pour the white into the bowl that I'm actually going to be whipping it in. And this bowl needs to be completely clean, completely dry, completely grease free. We're going to whip these egg whites to stiff peaks. You're definitely going to want to use an electric mixer for this. It would take forever to do by hand. And it's very important that your beaters be completely clean and completely dry. 
One thing I love about this mixer is it comes with two sets of beaters, so when the first one's dirty from mixing everything together initially, I just swap in the second pair. So our egg whites look perfect here. They've increased in volume. They're thick, white, fluffy. They hold their shape. If you pull a spatula through them, the little peak that forms does not dissolve into itself or fall over. So we are going to take this and add it to our cake batter. And we'll add our egg whites all at once. You do not want to use an electric mixer at this point or you will way over beat your batter. You want to use a spatula and just gently fold the cake batter and the egg whites together until they're completely combined. Our egg whites are really delicate at this point, so if you stir everything or you overmix everything, you'll completely deflate them and then you won't have that nice, moist, fluffy cake that we're aiming for. Using egg whites is a great way to make the cake nice and fluffy, and since the egg whites are white, it gives the cake its nice white color. It's not tainted yellow by the yolks. So you want to be gentle doing this, but you do want to make sure that all of the ingredients are completely incorporated and you have a pretty smooth batter when you're finished. Now I'm going to be making a two layer, eight inch round cake. So to prepare these cake pans, I'm just going to spray the sides um, with baking spray and make sure you use baking spray that contains flour. So one of the scariest things for me about baking a cake is that moment when you go to invert it onto your cooling rack and it doesn't just slide out. If your cake sticks to the bottom of the pan, you could have to start completely over. So my favorite way to guarantee that your cake will not stick is to cut out rounds of parchment paper and place these in the bottom of your baking pan. And the easiest way to make these rounds, the way I do it, is I just pull out a piece of parchment paper, place my baking sheet on it, trace around with a pencil, and then cut around the inside of that pencil line. Fits perfectly in the baking pan. And then we'll just divide our cake batter evenly into our prepared pans. I always struggle with this. I'm not good at evenly dividing the batter. Okay, that looks pretty even to me. So we'll take these over to our 350 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven where they are going to need to bake for about 35 to 40 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean or with a few moist crumbs. You'll let your cakes cool for about 15 minutes, then run a knife along the inside of the cake and invert it into a cooling rack. And look how easily that comes out. No sticking whatsoever because we used that parchment paper. Now your cake does have a little bit of a golden crust around the outside. Don't worry, when you cut into it, it should be a nice pure white color. Now we're gonna let these cakes cool completely and then we'll cover them with icing. Once your cake layers have cooled completely, all that's left to do is ice them. I am going to be frosting my cake today with my American or vanilla American buttercream. I'll just top this off with a little vanilla frosting that I've colored purple. I am using my Attico 864 tip for this. All right, once it's iced, it's time to dig in. I wanna show you how beautiful and pure white this cake is on the inside. And that is how you make the best white cake recipe completely from scratch. I hope you guys enjoy today's recipe and if you try it out, please let me know what you think. I think you're going to love how fluffy and moist and just all around amazing this cake is. All right, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cake has such a nice crumb. Mm-mm.